Welcome to the show because it is Black History Month. Yes, it is. <laughs> This month, we celebrate African Americans who helped shape America, from activists to educators to trailblazers, entertainers, and more. As a black woman in entertainment, I am standing on the shoulders of so many giants. Yes. I wouldn't be here without them. Giants like Miss Lena Horne, the beautiful Miss Lena Horne. Look at her. She was a singer. An actress, a dancer, and a civil rights activist who spoke at the March on Washington in 1963. I love when we use our power to make a difference, and she's a great example of that. She's born in 1917, and she joined the chorus at the Cotton Club when she was only 16 years old. Wow, her entertainment career lasted seven decades with numerous awards. She helped show Hollywood that talent comes in many different colors, okay? Yes, she did. And then there was the, also the lovely, beautiful Miss Diane Carroll. Yes. She was a major figure in the golden age of Hollywood. She also worked as an activist. In 1968, her hit show, Julia, was the first to show a middle-class black family and the second to star a black female lead. Wow. That is amazing. Then, in 1984, she lit up the screen as the ultimate diva in Dynasty. Y'all, I remember that show. Cause that's when my mama used to let us stay up late on Thursday nights to be able to watch Dynasty. So that holds a special place in my heart. And of course, y'all, there's the living legend and queen of daytime, Ms. Oprah Winfrey, baby. Yes, yes, yes. She started in 1980, dominated the world of TV for over 30 years. Now, her book club, her charitable foundation, her work on The Color Purple, they all have made her a household name. Each of these women help open doors and create opportunities for entertainers like myself, all while making a major impact in our culture. I am so, so grateful for these women because without these women, a lot of us wouldn't be here. And they've set an amazing example. So we want to celebrate beautiful black history. Starting and kicking it off on the first day of February. Y'all ready to get into the show? Is that all right? Let's keep it moving. He's been spinning records since the 90s and kept us dancing through the pandemic with club quarantine. Give it up for DJ D9! the show. I'm so happy to be here. You're happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> it's an honor to have you here. Oh, thank you. I'm a huge fan. We all love you, though. You know? You do the love. Now, recently, uh, we saw each other at the, the Grammy Hip Hop Party, right? Yes. But do you remember the first time we met? I actually do remember the first time we met, which is a, it's a funny story. What's the story? So it was Fashion Week, New York City. Okay. It was hot. Everyone was looking beautiful. <laughs> it was Beth Ann Hardison's party. Uh -huh. I was DJing. And then our buddy, um, Legendary Damon, came into the DJ booth. Legendary Damon. And he said, I'm going to bring someone up to say hello. And he brought you over, and I was nervous. And I had to introduce you. And I was like, you playing were... music. And I was like, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jennifer Holiday." <laughs> 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 and yeah, and she looked at me, she said, huh. I did not. <laughs> Stop it. Y'all, I get that all the time. I'm either, look, d nice. I'm either Jennifer Houston or Jennifer Holiday, And I'll be like, you know what? I mean, come on, it's Houston and Holiday. I wasn't mad. 
Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> I, cleaned, I cleaned it up well. I was like, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. Just, now, listen, beautiful. I got to tell you, through the pandemic, you held it down, down, down. Thank you. Thank you. Honey, me and my friends, we would get together at our friend's house, and then you pop up on the screen, and we would watch the verses. Anybody watch the verses and stuff like that? All of those moments. Like, what gave you the idea to want to do that? Well, to be honest, I was, uh, I had just moved to L.A. like one year before the pandemic, and I had no family and friends, so I was quarantined at home alone, mm -hmm. and it was probably the worst feeling, but the most beautiful experience, because if I, had I lived in New York still, there would be no CQ, there would have been no one dancing the way we did for that entire time. And um, I was sitting at home, just trying to find ways to stay connected, opened up my laptop, turned on Instagram Live for the first time, and just started playing music and sharing stories and, and just watched it build and build and build. And, you know, five days later, it became just like this legendary party. Five days later? Five days later, yes. Right. Did, did it even cross your mind that it would impact people the way that it did and it would blow up the way that it did? No, I'll say this. Day four was the day that I, that I thought that it was something special. Mm -hmm. You know, day four was like a Friday night and Drake was in there and The Rock, and I was like, wait, I never even met Drake, you know? The, you know, we're not even homies like that, but he was in there partying and like he was in there chatting with people and that was the moment that I thought it was, it was something special. And uh, there was a woman in, uh, left a comment that said, wow, D-Nice has everyone in here. The only people missing are the Obamas. You uh, got them too though, right? Yeah, I woke up the next morning, I was like, all right, I'm gonna figure out how to get one of the Obamas <laughs> in here. The, the dog, a bird. <laughs> Whatever, I needed someone from them. But what did you do to get them? Like you know, I just I just made a couple of calls to to you know their team. I DJ for for the Obamas and I DJ for the Obamas. You know, <laughs> he just slid that right in there. <laughs> um, and just you know, placed the call and just you know kept my fingers crossed, hoping that they would also understand what what it wasn't about like a real party. It was about trying to inspire people. Mm -hmm. And you know, five five or six hours later, Michelle was in there, and um, it changed everything. <laughs> That is amazing. Okay, has music always been there for you? Like the, the comfort, the peace, the, you know what I mean? What has it done for you? So music, music has literally been like my lifeline since I was a kid. I you know, it. I grew up, you know, um, sleeping in like my, you know, living rooms of my aunts and my grandma, my great grandmother. Mm -hmm. And my aunt used to have like this stack of records like next to the, those big record players. You're too young to know about this. But it was like these big record players, like a whole unit. And she would have all of these records and I would go through the records and it would be like Teddy Pendergrass and yeah. Melba Moore and Diana Ross. Is. I know who that is. Yeah, you know, and like, uh -huh. and so when you fast forward to, you know, 20, 2024, or just say 2020, when we started doing this online, to have artists that I grew up playing, you know, like Melba Moore. I mean, she was in, she was on my IG Live every day. Oh my goodness. You know, and, um, and you know, Diana Ross would stop in or Gladys Knight and like all of these icons that I grew up loving and their music, in, including the music in the 80s, just defined my life. You mm -hmm. know, like every, I don't, I can't remember a time when I just didn't enjoy listening to music. And now you get to impact the world with that music. Yes. Okay, I have to ask, like out of all those people you name, who, who is the person you've been most excited to meet? Like out of, you know, all the people you grew up listening to, like who is that person you like, oh my God. All right, so my, my oh my God mo the moment, there are two people. Well, actually there are three people, but I'll keep it brief. One, when I get to see Diana Ross in person mm. and you know, her son invited me to a concert at the Hollywood Bowl. That was a moment when she looked at me and she kind of like, well, I would like to believe that Diana Ross gave me a little wink. I'm sure she did. <laughs> I'm sure she did. I mean, I was sitting with her family and she did a wink, so maybe she had something in her eye, but you know, I have to believe that it was for me. Uh, another moment, it was um, Smokey Robinson. You know, like. That was his man. What was that like? What? Smokey, Smokey was, it, it was just a whole vibe where we were at a party here uh, for Holly Robinson, Pete, mm -hmm. for their foundation. And I saw Smokey and I was like, man, I know he was on my IG Live and he left a comment. Let me just go say hi to him in person. And then as I was walking towards him, he was walking towards me to say hello to me as well. And that was, um, that was just, I was just in awe, like to know that Smokey Robinson actually knows who I am, you know? We all know who you are. Will you stick around for a little bit? Absolutely. All right, we'll be right back. 
We're back with the night. Now, today is the first day of Black History Month, and you played an influential role in hip hop through the years. Yes. Like, tell us how you got started. So I started, I, I was um, 15 years old, living with my cousin in the Bronx, and her boyfriend was a... That's you. Uh -huh. I'm, the, I'm the BX, baby. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> and uh, uh, her boyfriend was a security guard at a men's shelter in the Bronx, and he asked me to bring over some food. I thought I was... I wanted to be a chef, but really all I was doing was like warming up some corned beef hash. <laughs> and like, and I was like, all right, cool. I, I brought him over food and then he was like, hey, I want to introduce you to someone. And he walked me into the office of uh, DJ Scott LaRock, who mm -hmm. started our group Boogie Down Productions. And then Scott LaRock introduced me to KRS One, who actually lived in the shelter. And in that conversation, DJ Scott LaRock was like, hey, you're going to be down with our group. Didn't know if I could rap, didn't know, you know, he just, felt the energy that I the should be a, be a part of the group. And from that point on, I was, you know, music has been my life. That oh, is look at amazing. That. So back then, did you think that you would come this far and do so much and be so impactful? No, I didn't think I would still be here, to be honest with you. You know, back then, hip hop didn't have like this long kind of like career. Um, you know, most artists, three or four years, you were over, mm. you know? And I was actually, my career ended in, uh, my rap career ended in like 1992. I was over. No one wanted to sign me, but it was the best feeling in the world because I had to figure out what was I gonna do with my life, you mm -hmm. know, after, after this stop. And I taught myself how to program, so I, I built websites for everyone. I did the Diary of Alicia Keys website to, you know, Boys to Men, Annie oh Lennox, Reebok. I was working on everyone's websites as a programmer with my own company. And then I got into the DJ. I love that you were still there in, within the music yes. in a different type of way. And your song, Self Destruction, yes. the anthem to stop the violence movement, was in the late 80s? Late 80s. I was 18 years old when I produced that. And um, that was a, an extremely proud moment um, to be able to create like our version of like We Are the World, you know? The hip hop to, version? The hip hop yeah. version. And that was, um, that was a really big record, man. So, yeah. I love that. And I, I was just saying to you in between the break, I love how you guys in the hip hop community stick together. Like, it's like a brohood or something. I think that's just amazing. And Not always, too. but when you find the right connection. The I gotta connections be I've seen. Yeah, I gotta be honest. <laughs> Don't tell us. <laughs> when, you, when you find the right people, you find the right connection, those are lifelong friendships. So, I didn't go to college, so my, my, college, my college was hip hop. So when okay. I see like Chuck D and I see LL Cool J and Queen Latifah. See all that like, love, y'all. That's, that's who I went to school with. <laughs> and we're tight. <laughs> I love how under you are, you're like, no, nah, Jennifer, slow down. <laughs> but that I've seen, it's amazing no, to no. witness. But we got a few photos to show you and explain. I want you to explain what's going on in oh, these moments, see what okay? You have here. Hold on, let me get yes. comfortable. Tell, tell us, oh, give wow. us the behind the scenes of it all. Wow. What's happening here? I actually remember that. So I'm with a tribe called Quest. MC Light, and um, this was TLC's gold release party for their what? first album. Really? Yes, yes. Wow, that's crazy. That's a throwback. That, that's amazing. Do you have this on your wall at home at all? No, I don't even have this picture. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll make sure you get it. I need this, I need this. <laughs> yeah, all of these memories, this is history. This you is mean? history right there. Okay, I'm sure we got another one. Let's see what else we got. Oh, wow. What's this moment? Man, I, I look like my daughter. <laughs> Oh. I was, I was um, 18 years old. This, I remember this. This was my first suit. Like, like, as my uncle, when, my, when Self Destruction went gold, my uncle said, hey, I'm going to take you and buy you a suit. And I remember oh. that suit. That was his tie, and that was at the gold party for Self Destruction. Yeah. Nice. See? Uncle yeah. taking you under the wings. Come on now. Ah. <laughs> the queen. The queen. The queen. I've been friends with Queen Latifah. Wow, I love this picture. I need these pictures. We're going to make sure you get them. See, we're about photos here and memories. <laughs> I've been friends with her since, man, since like 1987, 88. And we used to live in, we used to live in the same apartment building in New Jersey. And back then, you know, it was a long time ago, so we couldn't sell anyone anything. <laughs> so, so if one of us were like on the road, you know, either Latifah or Dana, as we call her, or her manager, Shaquem, they're like, yo, go pay, pay the rent for us. Or if I wasn't there, they would pay the rent for me. But we've literally been like, that's like, that's family. Yeah, this is, this is beautiful. And we're still friends. Yes. And legends and heroes and just 
amazing. Will you come back and see me? I would love that. We appreciate you so much tonight. We'll be right back. Y'all know I love hearing your stories, and our next guests are truly making a difference here in L.A. I want to read some of this letter right here. Okay. I'm Jessica, and I am the co-founder of Rock Era. Rock Era enriches, empowers, and invests in at-risk youth through arts, fitness, and mentorship. In three years, we've impacted over 1,000 youth and distributed over $150,000 to community members. It's important that the world sees our kids and understands that they are important too and that they matter. That is absolutely true and they absolutely matter. Y'all, please welcome Ari Tuttle and Jessica Jones. Explain why you do this. Yes, exactly so what I am the uh, founder and executive director for the nonprofit Rock Era. Rock stands for Regardless of Color. So our mission is to enrich. Thank you. Mm. Our mission is to enrich, empower, and invest in at risk youth in vulnerable communities through arts, fitness, and mentorship. So this, uh, it's personal to me. People ask me why Excessive. I do this. Mm -hmm. And um, when I look at our kids, I see myself. I grew up in a low income area. First and foremost, I get to give all glory and honor to God. Come on. Okay? I gotta make sure that I give him the glory because we are just walking in his purpose. We say it every day, okay? Absolutely. Uh, but I grew up in a low income uh, community myself um, and my father was incarcerated my entire life. Mm -hmm. So I still to this day have never seen his photo. I've never heard his voice. Um, and I know that he passed away when I was 11 while incarcerated. So that was hard, but I had a strong mama. She was really strong. Mm. She was my mentor, and, um, but I had other mentors come into my life, and they were amazing. And for me, I, that's what I needed. I needed that mentor to come into my life and show me the power of the arts, and they did. And so, um, and I didn't have access to those opportunities. Right. And I've decided that I wanna be that mentor to these kids yep. now. And you know how yes. crucial arts is it in is a child's development. Yep. And, I, I, and I, I wanna say this, it saved my life. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd be Mine sitting too. here on this couch with my children um, without it. So from there, I went to a performing arts high school. Thank you. Um, performing arts high school, performing arts college, and then I went on to travel as a musical theater actress. Come on. And you and I have a little bit of history. Oh, what's that history? So I was on the very first cast of Dream. You were the first cast? And you were the godmother. Okay, hold on, y'all. <laughs> you were the fairy godmother. What? So you came and you talked to me and you talked to the cast and we were so inspired by you. Oh my goodness. Um, and I was also the very first black Ursula to ever grace now, the stage. Now I ain't no Ursula, go on, girl. Circle <laughs> life, Ursula. <laughs> Yes, yes, All there that. we are. All that. Um, oh, goodness. But then after that, I went on to do Wonder, um, right after you. So I played the Circle of so Life So you was Wonder 4? I was Wonder 20. Oh, no, I was Wonder 24. Oh, you was Wonder 20. So I was a little, little late. Well behind me. Little okay. late. <laughs> but still, they still, to this day, they call it the J-Hud track. So um, that's how we have our history. And then I went on to play Effie White in Dreamgirls right after that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that was the hardest um, role I've ever done in my life. Wow. As you know, wow. it was a lot. It, it was a lot. But you have been in such an inspiration to me, to my kids, to all of us. And so we Thank just you. felt like we were such an alignment being on this show, such an honor. So I decided to quit my career in 2018. God had a calling on my life. He said, you gotta do something else. Mm. So I took my last bow and I decided to give back to our black and brown youth. That is beautiful. So that's how we started. I love your passion. Thank you so much. And, and how the arts help inspire you yeah. on your track. Yeah. Jessica, how did you get involved? Yes, ma'am. So I was introduced to the Watts Empowerment Center, um, crossing paths with her but never having met her mm -hmm. and working with the same kids who knew us. Um, but it wasn't until a, a protest, a DCFS protest that we went to. Some of our babies, we, we decided to show up at, at a village, as a village to represent and protect them. And Ari walked up to me and said, hey, I got this film program. I think we might, you know, be able to work together. And I'm telling you, from the day that we walked into that classroom, it was a wrap. It was from history there. from It there. was a wrap. From, there was no other option. I, I tell people for a little bit of time, and people won't be honest, but for a little bit of time, I got frustrated with God. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, this is, I can tell this is my purpose yeah. because things are aligning, but th this is not quite what I asked for. It's not what I expected. And it's not quite what I wanted, but I'm seeing the fruit of my labor turning in front of me, yes. turning in front of me. And now, like, I can't see another way. 
Right, yeah. I can't see another way. I mean, these kids, like, I, I can't see anything but them. And to be a light and to be a vessel and yeah. to just show up, yeah. I want my gifts to multiply, yeah. right? And like, they I, will. I, I, that, that, and that's all I'm here for. And so they have. That's, that's how I came on. I love, I love all of that. <laughs> yeah. I can feel yes. y'all passion yes. within yes. this. So it can't help but to soar and mm -hmm. prevail. So mm -hmm. just know that. Can you tell us a bit what more about like what the programs that it is you offer? Yes, we have a lot of programs. Um, first and foremost, our arts program, Arts Rock. Mm -hmm. So we do singing, acting, dancing, mm -hmm. um, film and TV. Mm -hmm. Then we have um, Girls Rock and Boys Rock. Those are our two empowerment programs for um, kids ages seven to 17. We talk about um, self-love. We talk about, I'm a huge believer in affirmations. So Me we too. talk about affirmations and we, we have a chant that you might hear later. Um, we do. <laughs> well, I want to hear it, that's for sure. <laughs> girls rock. Uh, we do girls and boys rock. We do you want to talk about fitness rock? Yeah, we do fitness rocks. Uh, so we invite our kids to come and be safe with us. Right. And then we align our programs with them, with their interests. So if we have kids who say, I think I might want to dance, I think I might want to paint, I might be struggling in school a little bit, then we might, you know, kind of guide them to Boys Rock. If we have kids who say, you know what, I kind of want to play football, but I'm not there yet, then we might kind of align them with Fitness Rocks to get their conditioning to where it mm -hmm. needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really, truly taking a look at the whole child and taking a look at the community, really, and going in seeing and them. seeing right. them for what they Building want and not saying, I have a solution for you. Yep. I don't have, you know, the medicine that you need, but what I do have is an opportunity. And I have me that can stand next to you to facilitate Got what it is you want to achieve. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's what it is. Yeah. That's impactful. Yeah. Will you stick around for a little bit? Of course. Okay. okay. We'll meet some of the kids from Rock Era after the break. We'll be right back. And we're back with Ari and Jessica. Also joining us are three kids from the nonprofit Rock Era. Hi, guys. How are you? Okay, can you introduce yourselves? My name is Carrie Kennedy. I am 16 years old, born and raised from Watts. Nice. And what's your name? My name is AJ. I'm 12 um, from Los Angeles, California. All right. <laughs> yes. My name is Amaya. I am 13, turning 14 in two weeks. And I'm from uh Oh, California. happy early birthday. And I see you. It's a few more of y'all in the audience. You want to wave your hand, guys? <laughs> What would you guys like to say to Ari and Jessica? First thing I would like to say is I love y'all so much and thank y'all for everything y'all have done for me. Like, without y'all, I would not be here right now. Like, I'm so for real. She's emotional. I love y'all so much. Aw, I'm gonna give you some tissue, girl. Here you go, I understand. You wanna say something? Yeah. What you got? Thank you, Ari and Jess, for allowing me to be a part of this program. I love both of y'all, and y'all, I treat y'all like family. I love, I love you too. too. Good job. Well, I just want to say that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I just want to say I thank y'all so much for coming into my life, bringing positivity, and motivating me, and teaching me that I can do anything that I put my mind to. And I love y'all so much. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna ugly cry. Okay. I'll... <laughs> Why are you crying? No, nah, they um feeling, they saved me, like so to hear KK say that. In the past, she's called me her best friend, and that's made me like kind of tear up a little bit. But like to hear her say words that I know she means, and to know that like I've done for her what she did for me. Mm. Like I think of people sometimes pursue giving back. In, in some type of ego context, right? right? Like, there's a little bit of glory that comes with it, but like, God gets all the glory, so it's that right there. <laughs> there's, um, there's nothing more in life that I could achieve that would mean more than, than what she said to me. Wow. And I mean that, and she knows it. Aww. These are our babies. Yeah. These are our kids, and they know that. Each and every one of them, we have so much love for them, and we treat them as our own. Sure. There are they? Yes. Yes. Now, ladies, how are you funding your nonprofit? Oh, um, so we are a nonprofit. So uh, we are turning four soon. So for the first two years, we personally invested. Um, two and a half years, we didn't have a salary, but more than being unpaid, we 
paid for everything. We paid everything. for food, we paid for transportation, we paid for everything. I mean, we emptied our life savings into making this work. Um, and then we were extremely, extremely blessed um, by Elof and her partner um, organization, The Change Reaction. And they were able to lift us up, um, just kind of get us on our way, kind of give us a little scoop. Um, and now we are blessed after two and a half years without a salary, and now three years. We just got a grant from um, the Justice uh, Department of LA. We did. So now we'll have a salary yeah. and um, the kids will have full programming and uh, at least for our arts rock program, we'll be good for the next three years. So we're not going anywhere. That's right. We yeah. still got some figuring out to do. That's to you. But God said we got you at least, yeah. you know, for at least the next three years. So it's, it's a mix. It's grants. It's people loving on our kids through in-kind donations. It's them buying the shirts that we need, buying the shoes, the fitness gears to compete in the you know, the competitions, it's its a mix, it's a village, and it's truly just a standing in place and doing what we can and, and, and letting God do the rest. And like she said, we started with nothing. Mm -hmm. And that didn't matter as long as we were able to impact their lives. I mean, there was moments where we couldn't uh, pay our own rent. Not at mm. all. Um, but I wanted to make sure that they had what they needed. And this program not only just affects them, but it also affects their families. Mm -hmm. right. We offer funding support to their families. Mm -hmm. We offer housing, um, mm -hmm. food security. So anything that we can do to empower them and help them and with the whole family, it's, it's, um, it's what it's all about. Well, you're doing it. <laughs> Keep doing it. And we support you. Our friends at Platinum Fitness love the work you are doing to increase access to fitness and create safe environments and opportunities for youth in our community. Planet Fitness provides affordable memberships in a non-intimidating environment. So they know getting active is so important for mental and physical health and creating inclusive communities. So they are making a $10,000 donation to Rock Era. <laughs> to learn more about Rock Era, visit our website. Here you go, guys. Keep shining. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep shining, y'all. Congratulations. We'll be right back. It's been a season full of surprises, and right now I want to surprise an amazing couple. They have no idea we're outside of their home. Yeah. Our couple, DC Embray and Tasha, are expecting twins but don't know the gender. So their best friends, Lori and Sarde, are going to help us surprise them, and I get to tell them what they're having. Hi, Lori. Hi, Sarde. Hi. Hey. Love you. Love the show. Oh, my God. I'm so excited about this. I see you got a couple of other folks over there. Who's that with you guys? Oh, we have the whole family. We got mom, dad, sister, brother, best friends. Okay. It's so good to meet all of y'all. Okay. Look, can you tell me a little bit about who we're surprising today? <sighs> Tasha and December, they are the epitome of good people. We've been knowing them for a long time as a couple, double dates and all that type of things. What we found out through their journey uh, is that our bond is pretty, pretty tight. And we were there when they were trying to get pregnant and it was a, a really tough challenge. But right when they were ready to give up, it happened. It happened. They got pregnant. They got pregnant. And you won't believe this. What? Tell them, babe. What? They're having twins. <laughs> they having twins! Okay, so I think we should go and, and surprise them and let them know what the genders are. Can we handle Let's that, y'all? What you think about that? Let's go, I got you, okay. come on, come on. All right, ladies. Let's get into it. My heart is pumping. Okay. <laughs> this don't happen as yet. Shh, shh, shh. Okay. They got a ring door. Okay. So we, we can... Get in there. <laughs> Okay, that's one ring out. Oh, let me be quiet. Did he see you? Surprise! Surprise! You are the Jennifer Hudson Show! Surprise! DC and Gray Tasha! Oh my God! Oh! It's all of us! We are here! Oh my God! Y'all surprised? They done ran off on me. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. And wow, we're here, family and all. You got your family there, and you got the Jennifer Hudson. 
Dance and Show family here. Okay? Now, DC and Bray, I heard you guys are, you're you having twins, is that right? We are. <laughs> How y'all feeling right now? Almost as shocked as when I found out we was having twins. <laughs> We're excited about that for you guys. Congratulations. I know this journey has not been an easy journey. Now, do you know the, the gender of the t twins yet? We don't. We don't. We, we don't. are ready to find out. <laughs> well, guess what? I know. Oh, what you know? I know what it is. We so, know. so, 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 I got this big old button right here. When I push this button, it's going to tell me what you're having. And we ain't never did it like this. This is, you're having twins, but I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, you know that much. But this is the gender reveal for the first baby, y'all. Okay? <laughs> So, DC and Bray and okay, Tasha, y'all ready? Because this is a serious moment, and I'm happy yeah, to be ready. a part of it. Okay, y'all. Three, two, one! <laughs> going through it. Okay. All of us, right? We loving this. Yeah. Thank y'all for letting me be a part of this moment, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for being a part this of this moment. This is everything. Thank you. We want to make it real exciting for you because this is a beautiful moment. Now, and I know you want to know what baby number two is, don't you? Don't you? Yes. Well, y'all better <laughs> stick around because you're only going to find out after the break. With Tasha and DC and Bray, who are expecting twins. Okay, ladies, are you ready to find out yes. about baby number ready. two? Ready. Y'all ready? <laughs> Whew, here we go. We ready. Three, two, one. This was a surprise, so unexpected. Um, we are very blessed. It has been a crazy journey, emotionally, physically, financially. Everything is just on God's time, and we are very, very happy. And thank you for having us in your happy place. Thank you for letting us be a part of your happy moment. And when, well, since your family is getting a little bit bigger, we want to help you out by giving you a gift card for $2,500 for all your beautiful babies. Congratulations. And thank you, Lori and Sade, for helping us be a part of this moment and for helping out. And y'all, too, congratulations, y'all. Kiss the babies for us. Thank you so much, Jennifer. You're welcome. Thank you. Y'all be blessed. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.